out of all the afterlife possibilities. Reincarnation's the one I most hope is real. The chance to respawn and try again. 2005 series Have I Been Here Before explores this concept, taking celebrities back to their past lives using hypnotic regression. It's an evocative thought, how today's stars may have fared during previous turns of the cosmic wheel. Could Hulk Hogan have been one of the founding members of the KKK? Was James Corden one of those fish that swims up your piss? Hypnosis is powered by the human trait of being too embarrassed to not do what's expected of you, be it dancing like a chicken at a hen night, or alien abductees remembering when a big lizard stuck lasers up their ass. As a scientific tool, regression allows people to remember things they've seen in movies, putting everyone in medieval Britain or ancient Rome and never some obscure Turkish hamlet they've no cultural knowledge of. Cleopatra, were you? And not some nameless serf gone of old age at 25? Missing the opportunity to call it Who Do You Think You Were? The show occupied the lunchtime slot before Loose Women, during that mid naughty spiritual boom kickstarted by Most Haunted, aimed squarely at the same demographic as magazines with headlines like Molested at My Own Funeral and Dead Dad's Toxic Ghost Farts Made My Hobby Impotent. Everything you're about to see could be true, or it could be the figment of our celebrity's imagination. It all depends on whether you believe. Hosted by Schofield back in a previous life when he was still getting work, our title sequence shows celebrities as they once were. Joe Pasquale as a monk, Barry off EastEnders as the Virgin Queen, Linda Lusardi, a Roman concubine. Have we all been here before? In a past life? Regression's quite revealing in how people see themselves. King or peasant? Pickpocket or tragic romantic hero? First up is John Barrowman, probably a general in the Great War, who got cancelled for dropping his trousers. The first half of each episode has them put under by a hypnotherapist, described by her own website as an intuitive soul whisperer, though she's got the sing-song voice of a dial-up modem talking to a stranger's puppy. You inside or outside? I'm inside. And what are you inside of? Tent. No, he wasn't Bernard Breslor in Carry On Camping, but he was in the arts. Are you aware of having a physical body? Mm. I'm, a cl- of- I'm a clown. And how do you look? <laughs> I look very silly. What, do you, what are you wearing? Very big, with ruffles, and I have big red feet. In every respect, you're classic clown. My name's Oliver. In soft focus dramatic reconstructions of 1817, Oliver Nostrovich performs in Bucharest with his trapeze artist parents. My, my, my family are trapeze artists and I'm the one, if anything happens, I'm the one who has to make the crowd laugh. They perform without a net. Well, hopefully that doesn't happen, now you've put it in your head. It's, they've slipped. My brother's fallen. And where's your brother now? On the ground. I'm getting in, I'm, someone's pulling me. Who's pulling me? Someone's you? pulling me. Stop pulling me! And how's that make you Really feel? angry! Me when a video doesn't get many likes. I can't make them laugh! It's a tragedy-filled life for poor old Oliver. And jumping forward seven years, he and his parents are now penniless wandering beggars. What's happened? Hmm? I'm a thief. You're a thief? Yep. Don't tell anyone. Then his wagon's burned as he's jailed for being a tea leaf. I stole off a woman. You know, one of those kind of women. Hmm. Hands above the blanket, John. The second half has Jules off Escape to the Country try to historically verify the stories. Gah! A visit to a creepy clown museum leaves John visibly shocked to learn there were circus tents back then. But by the early 1800s, exactly the date we're talking about, the tent very definitely has made an appearance. So. 
I came into this sceptical, but they're starting to sway me. But just standing underneath it, there's no doubt that a fall from that height would indeed be fatal. But Let's find out who Linda Lusardi was, beginning with a psychic physical. Lots of movement when you dangle it down there. Weird. How old are you, Mary? Ten. And what kind of clothes are you wearing? Steady. Linda seems distressed the whole time she's under, as though in the middle of a nightmare. And are there any other houses near your house? Yeah. What happened? Linda? I was leaning on the wall. Mm. And the ball went under. Trapped my arm. It really hurt. Mm. Straight into a memory of some wood falling on her arm. This begins a life of absolute dark age misery. Only daddy. Only daddy. What happened to your mummy? She's dead. And how old were you when mummy died? Four. I miss my mum. Mm. Oh, I'm cold. I'm always cold. Mm. Dropped a baby. They probably die. You've four. lost four babies. Four babies. They've all gone. They've all gone. <laughs> the children. <sighs> Where are the boils? Black boils. <laughs> my arms. On top of my legs. Mm. <gasps> it's nice. It's interesting, having seen her die of plague after dropping multiple babies to go back and look at Linda's pre-hypnosis interview. From today, I hope um, that Andrea can uh, make me a little bit more positive about myself. But let's not get too heavy and analytical. This is light viewing, the sort of thing to watch when you're eating your tea. When Mary was um, suffering from the black boils, I could actually see them and like, um, when I was asked where else they were, I, you know, I saw myself lift up the blanket and they were all in my groin and under my arms. They were disgusting, absolutely revolting. Might finish that later. Though there's no historical record of a nondescript 14th century peasant dead from boils, are historians wowed by Linda's spot-on description of a brown tunic? It's intriguing that Linda would give such a good description of a peasant girl's life. But I remember that I had the same face in that life. It was me. It wasn't a different looking person. It was me. That's even more telling that you actually saw yourself disfigured in a way. Yeah. Some celebs are after help with current life problems. Barry off EastEnders wants to cure his fear of choking on food by discovering its origin. It's a sort of time travel, but instead of assassinating Hitler, they're pulling a pickle out of medieval Barry's throat as he scoffs a big dinner. Three, two, one. What do you see, sense or feel now, if anything? He looks really comfortable, tranced beneath a tartan blanket, like it's the best nap he's had in ages. But there's a very clear divide between participants. The women building wretched lives as wailing widows or grieving mothers, while men cast themselves as knights and warriors, like Sir Barry the Brave. If you get the name Richard, mm -hmm. Florin. And does the castle have a name? R Roussillon. We fight for the count. Back in 14th century France, Barry loved a fair maiden. Who's Madeline? She's a lady in waiting. Mm -hmm. And who's she the lady in waiting to? A count. Is she someone you're allowed to be with, or is it just. No. Poor Sod's unlucky in love, even in a past life. When the count told him to stay away from Madeline. We're gonna do it anyway. We're gonna do it anyway. Who are you fighting against? The English. Unfortunately, Barry gets shanked in a battle. But you can't breathe. What's happening? A neck wound. What's happening in the last few minutes of that lifetime? 
just lying in, lying in mud. I can't breathe and I can't move. Well, that's the choking explained. One pike in the neck and hundreds of years later you're cutting up your twix into a dozen pieces. In these confusing times, it's a relief to have proper experts at hand. I believe that by visiting your past life, you can eliminate certain pains and aches in this life simply by discovering what happened to you, where the pain emanates from, where it comes from. Eliminate certain aches. You discover that the pain stops in this lifetime. Now that your eyelids are closed, my voice will travel with you deep into your subconscious mind. Three, two, one. What do you sense now? What can you sense if you've got any feet or any body? Yes, I think so. Okay. Do you sense whether you're male or female? Do you know what your name is? My name is Sid. Sid Large. No, no, Eddie Little. Do you have a job or anything you do in your community? I make videos about shite old telly. Edmunds, Barrymore. I see a bald man. He's getting changed. Do you find him attractive in any way? I just told you, he's bald. Are you aware of having any clothes on? No, I've got it out. It's 1643. I've just looked at a soldier's wife by mistake. He's pushing a lance up my knob. Now I'm a farmer. 1850. A plough has run over my knob. It's 1945. I've got it caught in a mangle. Churchill's here. He's laughing and laughing. Go to the point where your soul leaves your body. I think it was the first time I saw this. Five, six, coming out of it. Seven, eight, eyes open, nine, ten, wide awake. <sighs> what happened? I hope I didn't talk about anything embarrassing, like my knob. Big Bow was actually a twofer with another previous life, as Peter Edmonds in 1930s Hull. Does anyone else live in the house with no. you? Is there anyone you love and care about? No. Um, he uh, worked, in a, worked in a canning factory, you say he died uh, of TB in a hospital, nobody came to <laughs> see him. <laughs> That's our boy. Melinda Messenger, a mother of three wonders if a past life could explain her protective instinct towards children. Because, you know, I would adopt every child under the sun if I could. So I do wonder, yeah, maybe there's something there. I'm, I know that I'm, you know, massively, massively protective of, of children. To begin the session, Andrea needs Melinda to become deeply relaxed through an hypnotic, calming voice. She... A... Drifting further and further still, drifting and floating through an hypnotic, calming voice. What kind of sack are you wearing? It's just like a dirty old cloth. Is there anyone you love or care about? No. Unsurprisingly, given her pre-interview, she's another one. Did the baby die? How old was the baby when it died? You want to work on your small talk, love. Time and again, celebrities build tragic backstories for themselves, like something from a cheap romance novel with Fabio on the cover. And if it wasn't bad enough for Mary losing four of her own children, she also had to contend with her disability. Another old misery guts is Denise Welch. And how did you feel when your mum died? <laughs> I was very, very sad. And was mummy ill for a long time? There's no boils, but imagine playing tennis and the farm boy you fancy runs you over in a tractor. How did the tractor hit you? Do you know? I ran in front of it. And what's going through your head? I can't feel my legs. 
Some of these regressions are too X-rated for YouTube. Harder. Not even a 2006 TV Quick Award Best Actress winner like Denise Welch could fake emotions like that. But not everyone's convinced. She talks about uh, tractors. She talks about women wearing trousers. Basically, none of these things actually took place in the historical era that, that she's talking about. So Things don't get better with Madjoff neighbours. Interesting choice of zooms, though. And up. And eyes. And teeth. And out. Allow yourself to be shown whichever doors are for your soul's highest purpose to go through today. Another farm girl. It's 1830s rural Ireland with 10 year old Kate Joyce. We have bread and cheese, porridge. My mother cooks potatoes. A man in the house. Do you know this man? Yes, but not well. He doesn't talk much. The man is a friend of her father, who she's effectively being sold into a marriage with. Is there anyone you do find attractive? Peter, he's a fun boy. But alas, she's married off to the wealthy man and not the farm boy she loved, Peter. I have a, a little boy, Peter. And who's the father of Peter? James. Did you marry James? Yeah. No, no, darling. He's named after Peter Tork. As you know, I'm a massive fan of the monkeys. We go ahead in time now to the next significant event. Yeah, it's another dead child. Baby Peter's on his last legs. What's he sick with? Not enough food. My mother's dead. I don't think Peter's got much longer. Peter's dead. James is dead. Magic spires too at 24, of not enough food, and Jules can't find their names in the books. However... Anne's detail is spot on. Potatoes were a cheap and readily available meal. So Anne paints a fairly realistic picture of life in 19th century Ireland, and there are one or two other details that I think are particularly startling. What's happened to the crops or the harvest? No, no good. Not enough food. Apparently there was a thing around that time called the Irish Potato Famine. Madge has pulled out a real deep cut there. And there's one more clue that really clinches it. And gives us the two years that the crops failed. It's, a, uh, it's an extraordinary story. Yeah. Indeed. How could an Australian woman possibly have known about all that? Of course, you live now in Ireland. Yes. Uh, so what's your, what's your background there? Well, my family were Irish. Yes, I mean, I do know about the potato famine, but then everybody who lives in Ireland does. Mm, the story is interesting. I showed it to somebody who was a fan of Neighbours, and they managed to point out all kinds of parallels between this new story and uh, the roles that Anne had played in, in Neighbours. Yeah, like that bit where Kate Joyce's husband had a big wobbly chin and went, BAM, all the time before getting lost at sea. This was too real, too real a life for it to be imaginary. OK, I'm going to check your chakras before we start and see how these are. Let's take a break from the endless suffering with Annika Rice, who, interestingly, is the only one to have gender swapped. Do you know what your name is? Richard. Richard's a sailor in 1528 journeying across a treacherous ocean to exotic lands, bringing barks, leaves and medicines back to England. And strange, strange plants. Say no more. And unlike all those other grief merchants, it's a strangely not self-pitying regression. What did you learn in that lifetime? Hard work and... I learnt, it is what you make of it, it doesn't come to you. But in this life, Annika also loves sailing on the sea. I am truly happy when I'm on a boat, 
truly, truly happy. Um, and, you know, I have spent my whole adult life up ropes and falling off boats. And The show always sells this as a past life informing their current life and fears, and not the other way round. That a boxer would naturally dream themselves a Roman gladiator. There's a great example with Joe Pasquale, hot property coming off his win on I'm a Celebrity, mostly through numerous comic references to his Jacobs, i.e. testicles, which became such a popular catchphrase it got cited on his wiki page. Oh, me Jacobs are hanging out of me shorts! Joe is regressed back to 1917 as a lad called Samuel. And do you have a family name, Samuel? Jacobs. Jacobs. One thing Have I Been Here Before gives us is witnessing various celebrities at the actual moment of their death. See the colours and... How's it feel? Tingly everywhere and very light. I feel as if my arms will float. I want to die. What are your thoughts as your soul leaves your body? Just sense some um, light. White light. I don't know, it's like I break up into a thousand sparkly bits. What are your thoughts on that lifetime as Jean, as your soul leaves your body? Nice. Nice. The one who most goes in knowing what he wants to find is Dr. Fox. God, did I exist a hundred years ago? If during this regression I was to find out that I had met my wife Vicky in a previous life. I think I'd find that really spooky. Probably not very likely though, is it? Are you aware of having a name at all? Thomas. Okay, Thomas. What do you sense happening now? I sense a woman called Sarah. What are the chances? I think I'm obviously very fond of her. Does she know that you have feelings for her? Yes, she does. It's like a square neck. Whatever floats your boat? Of course, it's yet another doomed romance. And she loves me too. I keep getting the feeling that I, for some reason, am not allowed to see her. And I think I uh, play a lute. They do keep saying past lives reflect your current one. I have this impression that the uh, door has burst open and I am being arrested by people or taken away by people. After five years in the clink, he's out with revenge on his mind. I see myself sitting on a horse and there are lots of other people around me on horses. Him and some 15th century mates are storming Sarah's dad's castle. We want to kill that man. He's a baron. And he doesn't hang about. Uh, we are having a feast. What happened to the Baron? And I put an arrow through his throat. I'm sitting with Sarah. We have children now. How I think I'm dying. I'm a much older man. She's uh, clasping my hand. I just say to her, I don't want to... I will see her in the future. I'll see her again. And who would Sarah be in 2005? Would she be anyone you know in 2005? Can only be my wife. What an unexpected twist. Uh, quite amazed. Yeah. Right, OK, I was just a bloke called Thomas and I just shot an arrow through this old guy's neck. But if we carry trauma, do we carry guilt? I don't feel guilty about this. This guy needed to die. I'm quite happy that, at least in a past life, if there was someone that I felt was really needed taking out, that me and my friends would do the right thing. Your art. Oh, and... In Neil's regression, um, the, the, the storyline there seems to bear a very close resemblance to the storyline in, in Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Is that one of Pasquale's Jacobs? So I can probably guess where you cynical swine stand. But what did the celebrities think? So then, have you been here before? I think I have. I mean, I believe it. And uh, uh, I, this kind of proves it. I did believe in that before I was regressed, and I believe in it even stronger now. 
Yes. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yeah. Yes. I think the honest answer is uh, yes. The one dissenter, Lusardi. I personally don't think so. I think it's either memory cells passed down by generation after generation, or it's just a very vivid imagination. Some people say we use only 10% of our brain. My problem with reincarnation is, if we're basically wiped every time we come back, then what's even being reincarnated? At best, people start to figure out life and who they are as they go through it. And nobody's born as the perfect version of themselves because this is their tenth go round and they know it all. So what's the point of enduring these prior experiences if the lessons are forgotten when we're babies again? Judging by this lot, all that's moving with us between lives is the trauma. Everyone weighed down by many lifetimes grief and loss, and old stab wounds. So be careful not to catch a shank to the throat, because when the next you's living on Mars, your robot butler will have to cut your food up real small. So as we begin... Just drifting and floating further and further back into your subconscious mind. <laughs>